Um, welcome to today's session of the TXCPA Mentor Program. We are going to be talking about working with recruiters and hiring managers. My name is Julie, and you've probably cool. seen me at a few other meetings that we've had. Um, I do appreciate, I see a few mentees have come today, so I really do appreciate that. Um, at any point in time during the session, if you have questions, feel free to either use the raise your hand function or type in the chat. And I will, from time to time, look at the chat and bring um, bring questions in. You are more than welcome to ask. Um, mentors, if you have other tidbits that kind of relate to what we're talking about in your experience, you're also welcome to chime in on that as well. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, I want to introduce you to, we have two panelists today. We have Bethany Queen and Mia Stevenson. Um, Bethany, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, hi guys, my name is Bethany Queen. I am the talent specialist here at Actually and Associates. So I work very close with uh, Julie. Um, I am the internal recruiter uh, for the accounting team. I've been recruiting for about, about four, almost five years. Um, I've recruited for a nonprofit um, staffing agency, and now I'm recruiting internally. Um, and I think that's pretty much my background um, is not in accounting at all. It's actually in psychology, uh, but my master's is in industrial organizational psychology. So essentially study of the workplace. So that's kind of what got me interested in uh, becoming a recruiter. So I'm happy to be here. Awesome, thank you, Bethany. And then Mia, uh, can you introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. So my name is Mia Stevenson. I work with Robert Half here in the finance and accounting department. Um, I have been here for about two years now. Uh, prior to Robert Half, I have a background in accounting. So I was at Goldman Sachs for the last about six years until I switched over. Um, I've just always had a passion for working with people. Um, and so this really gives me the opportunity to put that along with my industry experience together. Um, this job is extremely rewarding. Um, a little bit about Robert Half, we are a specialized global recruiting agency. Um, we're the largest staffing agency in the world. Um, been here for around 75 years. So very long time. Um, basically what we do, um, as we provide talent solutions um, and we partner with our global consulting group to really provide white glove service to our clients um, and identify, let them, you know, identify unique skill sets. So I work in finance and accounting. We work all lines of business, anywhere from, you know, technology, marketing, creative, HR, um, anything really that you can think of. But what's going to be relevant to you guys is probably going to be finance and accounting um i do permanent placement um and so anywhere from staff level accountants to controllers we we do it all so i am excited to be here and talk with you guys and um i know getting a job is extremely exciting but also kind of stressful um and so we are happy to be a resource for you guys and, and just partner together on your job search Thank you, Mia. Um, so you kind of went over what an external recruiter does at a, an agency. Bethany, can you talk about how your role works with recruiting people when you're working inside of a firm? Yeah, so it is um, a little different. Um, I'm not sure if Mia does this herself, but I know as an internal recruiter, I do the full cycle. Um, so I'm, you know, sourcing for the candidates or the candidates are just applying to the position that we have posted on you know LinkedIn, Indeed, or our website. Um, I'm doing the screenings. I'm getting them through the assessments. I'm getting them to the interviews with the partners. I'm extending the offers. Um, I'm launching the background. I'm launching orientation. I'm greeting them on their first day. So from the time that person applies until they walk in, all contact is with me. Um, and of course, some other people play a role in that, like HR partners and things like that. But I feel like that's kind of one difference um, it's it's kind of just all it's all on me because I am the sole recruiter for um, the firm. And of course, I know like Mia, you probably work with a lot of other different um, you know people, and you probably have like a larger team. But yeah, it's strictly just me. And it's not always like that as an internal recruiter. It kind of depends on the size of the company. Just because actually um, is mid size, you know, we only need one recruiter right now. 
Um, but who's to say in the next couple of years, you know, we have to bring on more people because the goal is to hire more people. That's what I'm here for. Um, so that was, I would say that's kind of just the big difference. And um, sometimes agencies, they have different areas that they recruit for. And I'm strictly just recruiting for accounting individuals. That's it. Nothing, nothing else. Just people that do taxes, audits, and bookkeeping. That's, that's kind of it for me. Thank you, Bethany. Um, so if I'm looking for a job and I'm working with an external recruiter, how does that recruiter get compensated for the work that you're doing to place me in the new position? Yes, absolutely. So for any candidate, it's 100% free. You know, we work, our compensation comes on the client's um, side of, of, of things. So basically, you know, the client will hire us to provide them the specific skill set that they're looking for. So we'll go out and recruit. Um, you know, we can be a resource for you guys with everything from the beginning to the end and offer stage, um, but then also a resource for you guys with like resume helping and um, formatting and advice and tips and stuff like that. So on the candidate side, it's 100% free and really a great tool and resource um, to use. So do internal and external recruiters work together? Yes, so they do. A lot of the times, um, Bethany, it's actually extremely strange. Your name sounded very familiar. And I think one of my candidates is out interviewing with you. So yes. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, wait a second. Uh, yes, we do. You know, it, it depends. You know, sometimes we work directly with hiring managers. Sometimes we work in, with internal HR. Sometimes, you know, in our case, we're working um, with internal recruiters. So um either or, you know, and a lot of the times it's it's just a good partnership to have together and just uh, push everything forward. And then I'll kind of just follow up on that. So yes, I um I have worked, uh, I am working, you know, with Robert Half, uh, I think it was George at the company that I'm uh, mm -hmm. working close with. But it is quite often that external recruiters work with internal recruiters. Um, sometimes we have positions that it's hard for us to fill on our own. Um, just because that's not a role that people just apply to a lot. And so, you know, we have these external resources where, you know, they can find candidates for us and they'll place the candidates at our firm. And of course, you know, this can be a contract to hire person, a temp person, or someone coming on just as a full-time perm employee. Um, so that actually, it happens quite often. Um, sometimes you just never know because a new worker just shows up and you're like, okay, new coworker, but you don't know how they were placed. You don't know if they applied online on the website or if a recruiter found them and, you know, found that opportunity for them. Okay. So Bethany, how, about how many accounting staff does your firm keep employed at one time? So right now, I want to say we're at about 58 to 60. Um, and I would say that the number kind of, it hasn't grown significantly or decreased significantly because sometimes when it comes to recruiting, you know, as much as you bring people in, sometimes people kind of just leave at the same time. Um, so it's hard to, um, you know, really gauge how much growth I've seen just because I've only been with actually going on maybe what seven eight months now um so I think I've I've seen the numbers stay pretty pretty consistent since I've started um but you know the goal right now is to of course increase without you know losing people um and typically like right now during busy tax season you don't see a lot of people leaving um because job loyalty is important of course during this time so, um, you know, we'll bring on a few more people uh, throughout the next few weeks. And then, you know, after busy season, people kind of decide if they stick around um, or if they, you know, if they look elsewhere. But it kind of just, it kind of just depends on the market itself, I guess. To say. Okay. So switching gears a little bit, if um, let's say that I am someone who's looking for a job and I want to, um, I, I guess, update my LinkedIn profile. What are the kinds of things that you as recruiters look for in someone's LinkedIn profile that uh, when you're staffing for like an entry-level position? 
Yeah, no, I can, I can take that one. You can piggyback um, as well. But, you know, what I look for, it's really good to have a very complete LinkedIn profile, right? So that's listing your skills. Um, a lot of the times I'll do a specific search for a client uh, and say that they want some specific skill set. Um, and if you have that on your LinkedIn, your profile is going to be pulled up first on my searches. Um, I would make sure that you have, you know, everything that you're, you've done, your experience, your background, really the more information on your LinkedIn profile, the more useful and helpful it is to me. Um, there is, you know, if you are looking for new opportunities, there's a setting that you can put um, to show that you are available to work. Um, recruiters see this. Um, and that's super helpful. That will, with any of my searches, your profile will be at the top of the list. So I would highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, and really just taking a second, making sure it's up to date, making sure everything, you know, is included on it. Um, and then if you, you know, adding your email or even your phone number, I know some people might not want their phone number out there, but your email address, that way, you know, I can get in touch with you more than one way. Um, I think those are all helpful ideas to make yourself more visible to external recruiters, agency and internal recruiters uh, like Bethany as well. Yeah, just to piggyback off that, I definitely agree with all those things. Um, I like to see a complete profile, um, especially skill sets, because, you know, when you are sourcing through LinkedIn, trying to find candidates, um, if there are certain things in the job description that partners care about, those are things that I'm looking for, you know, in your profile, in your resume. Um, and I'm also trying to make sure there are no discrepancies as well, um, you know, overlapping dates when it comes to jobs and things like that. Um, and of course, you know, like you mentioned, you can put that little, it's like a little filter you can put on your profile picture and it says open to work. Mine says hiring. So people know that I'm looking, you know, to bring on employees. Um, so I think, yeah, those are all pretty, pretty important. And I know um, also on your LinkedIn, like you can, um, your little blurb about yourself, you can kind of talk about, you know, what you're doing and what you're looking for as well. So people kind of have just like a snapshot or a highlight of, um, you know, what you're pursuing for your, you know, your career. I have a couple follow-up questions to that. Um, in regards to that open to work setting on LinkedIn, if someone wants to put that on, but is currently working at uh, a company, what kind of privacy is that? Um, would their employer know that they're looking for work? Um, I mean, yes. I would say if you don't want your employer knowing that you're kind of actively seeking, maybe not put that on there. Um, I don't know how often, you know, managers, supervisors go check on their um, current employees profiles or anything like that, but I can understand that it could happen. Um, so if you haven't like, you know, discussed the potential of you leaving, um, maybe not put that, but I guess more so when you are applying for roles or getting in contact with people, you know, you can always message, you know, recruiters. Um, that way you can still have those conversations with them, but just not publicize it, you know, fully. Um, do you have anything else on that, Mia? Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, I definitely get messages from candidates saying, hey, look, I'm confidentially looking, like, what do you have right now? I have, I think right now through Robert Half, we have, um, probably combined like 10 plus positions here in the Austin office that we've uh, made an ad for online. So I would apply to those. We check those daily. Um, we check all applicants. Um, you know, your resume pops up in my email. I look through your profile. I get in contact with you and then we just take it from there. Um, even if you're not the best match for the specific position that you applied for, let's talk about it. Let's see what else we have. Um, and let's be able to, you know, help you find something, whether it's that role or another role. I would definitely say when in doubt, apply, and we'll reach out to you um, and be in contact shortly. So. Thanks. And, and kind of following up with um, the different skill set terms, are there specific terms that you're looking for or ways that you can stand out other than just the open to work? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, Certain terms, so um, I know that for us, it's really important when people have a public accounting background already. Um, 
So mentioning things like that, uh, mentioning certain software that you've used um, that are pretty popular with us. Um, I would say, you know, maybe if you've been industry focused in, you know, certain tasks or audits you've been doing, um, I think those are things that would possibly stand out for me. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with that. You know, when we are working with a public accounting firm, it's having that public background or, you know, even having a CPA or things like that would stand out. Um, and for us, it just really depends. It's going to be role specific, right? So if I'm working on like a senior accountant position, having month in close, having reconciliations, financial statements, things like that is going to be important. Um, you know, differences when I'm working for a controller position. It's just going to be very position specific just because we work on such a wide variety of clients and needs. So. Is it common for um, people to be looking for part-time work? Um, I'll get messages um, every now and then. Not as common, definitely. Um, we don't do any part-time here. Um, in our group, we do have a sister team that does like contract and contract to hire, um, things like that. But I haven't really seen much um, part time in in the market right now, and that could be different for everybody. So it just depends. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, I don't come across too many part time um, people, honestly. Uh, not since I've at least started here. Okay, um, one last thing about LinkedIn profiles themselves. Do, do you actually look at who the person is connected with? Does that make a bearing on any kind of decisions that you make? Mm, not really, no. Uh, you know, I think having a lot of connections is great because you're, it just shows that you're networked and um, you know, you're well connected in the market. I'm not gonna, it's, it's nice. I mean, if I see that me and this person have, um, you know, 30 mutual connections and, you know, we went to Texas Tech together or something like that, like that's definitely nice to, as a, you know, conversation starter, but um, whether I reach out to you or not, it's not gonna have anything to do with, with the, your connections. But I would say connect with as many people as you can because on my LinkedIn, on my personal LinkedIn, I'll post some of the roles that we're working on and you're only gonna be able to see it if, if we're connected. So I think it's helpful, but it's not something that's super um, you know, important to us on our search. Okay, so um, in terms of engaging with recruiters, is it better for a person to apply or interview for a position through a recruiter or directly with the firm themselves? Um, I mean, I would say it can, you know, be good both ways. Um, I know when you do work with um, agencies, sometimes you have an agreement in place regarding, um, you know, certain candidates that you can and can't talk to if they've already engaged with those candidates. Um, but I, I think that, I, I don't think it would change the possibility of getting the role. I would say though, if you apply internal, like just through the website internally for the position, um, I'm the first person that's gonna see it because it comes directly to me. And a part of that is um, partners can also see immediately when candidates apply. So they can see them also. So you are getting, you know, firsthand eyes on your resume, um, which I think could be pretty beneficial um, because, you know, that's immediate feedback I'm getting from them. If they see something that they like that stands out, if they see something that, oh, probably not going to work, you know, it's a one and done kind of thing. So it, it could be quicker, I would say, um, but it won't always guarantee, you know, you getting that opportunity over somebody that went through, you know, a recruiter or an agency. So do you think if someone's having trouble um, getting a position at a firm when they're applying directly that potentially working with a re recruiter would help them get a placement if, the, if there might be something going on with the resume to get that help? Yeah, I would agree, you know, and, and we also do provide a lot of coaching uh, throughout the process as well. So, you know, I, it's super common, especially new grads, like they haven't interviewed much and 
So we like to be there and kind of coach them in, in the whole process. You know, one other thing about working with recruiters uh, or agency is that, you know, we can kind of prepare you for the interview and say, hey, look, you're meeting with Bethany tomorrow. She's awesome. She's so easy to talk to. Like, this is a little bit about, you know, her personality and things like that. So there is a little bit of, you know, preparation and uh, we can answer any, you know, questions that you have about the firm or anything like that, because we do have that close relationship. Um, so, yes, I mean, I, I definitely think it it's helpful and we can, you know, help with resumes, things like that, or um, just be there for guidance, you know. All right. So on LinkedIn, surely um, our mentors, mentees, everyone alike has received messages from recruiters. Um, what's what's kind of the etiquette for these messages that you get if both if you're open to work and if you're not open to work? Um, yeah, sorry, I have to unmute. Uh, so, you know, I think even if you're not open to work, I think, you know, establishing a relationship with a recruiter is important. Um, and it's it's good to have down the line, you know, if you're not currently on the market, that's fine. Let's connect and let me be a resource for you guys, you know, for you when you're ready. Um, so I think just, you know, replying to the message either way, and that way we can, you know, kind of establish a connection with you. Um, if you are interested, uh, if you are on the market, if you're any, you know, I get a lot of candidates as well that are more passively looking. They're curious what, what's going on. On, at the market right now, where are we, you know, economically, where are we going? What are you seeing? Um, and I'm happy to have that conversation as well. So don't feel that if, you know, you reach out to me, I'm going to pressure you to get a job in any way, because that's not what we're here for. We really just want to educate you. Um, and we want to be a partner, a partner with you. So that's what, that's what I'd say on there. And yeah, I think I'd, I pretty much agree with that. Um, you know, it could also just sometimes just be a connection um, just further down the line. It doesn't have to be something immediate, um, but, you know, I, I don't shy away from messages, you know, because I'm happy to help and provide, you know, whatever kind of assistance. Well, thank you. Um, if a recruiter hasn't reached out to me on LinkedIn or via email, sometimes you'll get phone calls and text messages as well. Um, how would you go about actually get, getting to work with a recruiter? How do you do that? Yes. So we're talking, I'll talk about external recruiters uh, or agency first, and then um, Bethany might have something different. But um, for me, I mean, I would do, you know, I've had candidates find me just on Google, um, you know, search <clears throat> Robert Half, Austin, Finance and Accounting or something. My LinkedIn profile will come up. I have my email um, and my phone number right there. So my direct line. So just send me an email, give me a call. Um, other ways, you know, I have a lot of uh, job postings online and you can see my profile, my LinkedIn profile attached to that. So, you know, one, apply to send me a message and I'll be in contact with you. And then for me internally, um, Typically, when somebody um, applies for a role, they get an uh, automatic generated email replying back to them saying, you know, someone's going to be in contact with you. And so that's when I take the next step to initiate an introduction um, for myself. Um, and, you know, usually if communication seems to be slow or lacking, um, just follow up with me because sometimes I do get kind of busy um, and you know, I get distracted with other things. Um, and so I usually try to put a lot of things on my calendar when it comes to scheduling, you know, conversations with candidates. But um, sometimes emails kind of get passed up. So if you just email me again, or you give me a call, um, you'll, you'll definitely hear back from me once, once you do that. I would agree. I sometimes things just get lost in the email. So um, I'm not ignoring you, but please continue to follow up and we will connect soon. We, we have a question um, for a candidate that networks with us, but for whom we can't personally vouch. Is there etiquette for connecting them with a recruiter? I'm not sure if I understand your question, but follow up if we can't, we, if uh, 
if you can. Is like, are we are we speaking in like a sense of like a referral? Like you're referring somebody to us and you're trying to understand etiquette for that? Because if that's the case, yes, but we don't know them. Oh, yeah. Um, so I've had this, this happens literally all the time. Um, so I would say if you um, know somebody, I would just, you know, get in contact with me saying, hey, Bethany, met this really awesome person. Um, they were interested in so-and-so work, so I suggested you. I'm not sure if you can reach out to them. I will just get the resume. I'll find them on there. I'll upload them in the system. I'll shoot out an email saying, hey, so-and-so sent your information. They said you wanted to connect, and I'll just kind of get the conversation started like that. So you don't have to always know the person. Just introducing um, yourself and just, you know, maybe saying how you two came across each other um, or if someone um, thought you'd be helpful for them kind of just something like that but yeah that's never an issue to pass somebody along um, I'm always open like you know to speaking with whoever you got yeah, awesome thank you <laughs> that's all I mean that's exactly what I would say as well so okay um, so that's all that I had planned for questions for today for you two. Um, if there's anything else that you want to talk about, potentially some positions that you are currently sourcing or some other tidbits about LinkedIn and networking or potentially going out to events, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think everything that we covered today, and it's just really all about networking and maintaining connections, right? You know, if you're not looking for a position right now, let's still connect. I'll drop my contact information on, on this chat and uh, feel free to reach out, you know, down the line, you know, we may have the perfect opportunity for you. Um, and I think everything that we covered from building up your LinkedIn, making sure that you're visible to, to recruiters, um, networking with people, connecting, having those connections in the market is extremely important, uh, especially here in Austin. It's it's much more of a small world than we think. You know, there's people are very much connected to each other in so many different ways. So establishing that and establishing yourself in this market is going to be very important. Yep, I'll definitely agree with that. Networking, networking, networking. Um, go meet people. And I know, I, I, I think every time I do phone screens with people, um, I hear them say, you know, accounting isn't, isn't the sexiest topic to discuss or it's just like the not the best conversation starter but if you're talking to people that are like-minded and you know they can put you in other spaces talk about it I mean of course everyone doesn't want to talk about their work everywhere they go but um don't shy away from conversations um you know you want as many resources as you can get behind you when it comes to searching for a job because sometimes job searching can be really hard and it's even more hard when you don't if you're just doing it by yourself um so, you know, don't, you know, shy away from reaching out to recruiters um, and agencies because, you know, that's, that's a good way to go if you just can't, you know, find any other opportunities. But um, don't be afraid to apply to roles if you think that, can you drop it? Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, if you think that you may not be super qualified, but you feel like you also still have, you know, some skill sets and things that, apply, that work for the position, apply apply just apply um someone's going to take a look at your resume and they're going to see something on it it's going to be worth it so you'll be fine yes agreed and and with robert half i mean we have so many different lines of business that if you're not a fit for maybe my group um we have so many other opportunities so we'll help you find something and really navigate with you what you're looking for a follow-up question on that particular one um perhaps Mia this is more for you if there were um, people wanting to do more like a career change mm -hmm. and they don't really maybe they're coming into accounting or potentially leaving accounting what kind of services does Robert Half have for that person yeah so you know we have a lot of entry-level positions so if somebody is you know maybe doing you know, something else that's a little bit different. They say they go back to school, they want to do accounting. We have entry-level staff account positions. You know, you always have to start somewhere. Um, and I think, you know, just reach out. Let's talk about it. Um, and let's see how we can help you. Um, whether it's, you know, on my side or our sister team with some of the, you know, we have APAR. Uh, we have roles that are 
you know, some accounting, some office manager. It's just, you, you can start somewhere and we're happy to help you um, for that as well. All right, thank you so much. Um, if there are any other questions from our um, mentees or mentors, let uh, you're welcome to ask them either in the chat or you can come off mute and ask. Um, I'll give you a couple more minutes. Otherwise, thank you so much, Mia and Bethany, for joining us today. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. Yes, this was really helpful. And I love talking to Bethany on the other side of everything to see right. how your world <laughs> works as well. Because sometimes we're so pigeonholed in our own uh, industry. But yes, I'm sending my email in the chat right now. Um, this is my direct line as well. So if you have any additional questions after this or you think of anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Bethany, can you provide yours as well? Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I just had one question. Um, hi, I'm Ben Chang. Um, so I think when you guys had mentioned, you know, just discussing market trends or market conditions. So, you know, what have y'all noticed in the last few years and currently as well? Um, you know, if any companies are, you know, realigning the strategy based off market conditions, um, or are you still seeing a sustained demand for finance and accounting professionals? Yeah, good question. You know, I would say we have not seen a dip in anything on our end. Um, you know, I think what we've seen the most is candidates getting a little bit nervous of, okay, where is this? Uh, market going, you know, kind of taking a look at the importance of finding a stable company, whereas maybe last year or two years ago, it's like, okay, that's fine, you know, I'll go work for this company, but really analyzing more of the financial health of the company, because you want to take that next step into a stable organization. Um, Austin is an extremely hot market, companies are moving here, people are moving here. And so within our bubble here in Austin, we have not seen a slowdown. Um, and you know, Q1 is when a lot of our um, clients start reevaluating their staffing for the year and budgeting for their staffing. And so now really is a great time to look because there are, you know, more openings and we typically see a busier Q2, Q3. So good time to look. I, I you know, think that things are extremely stable, especially in Austin. Yeah, and I'll just agree with that. Um... So like I mentioned during my introduction, I've been with Ashley for about seven, almost eight months. I'm going to stick with seven because that sounds more likely. Um, and uh, this is really my first time doing a lot of accounting, uh, recruiting in accounting. So it's for me, it's hard to say what the trends have been like. But um, just as a recruiter in general, accounting and finance is kind of one of those jobs you're always going to need in accounting, always. Um, so the likelihood of that kind of just drastically dropping or decreasing, I don't see that happening anytime soon, honestly. Um, so that's, that's something to look forward to. I think, you know, you can always find a job in this kind of world. Perfect, thanks. And um, just to follow up that question. So, you know, just looking at, you know, the 2023 hiring trends and finance and accounting um, from Robert Half actually. Looks like, you know, a vast majority of folks, you know, 63% of folks still want a hybrid position and 47% want a fully remote position with a, you know, very small, minimal amount of people, 25% want a fully in office position. You know, how as, you know, how as companies are starting to go more in office, it seems like, you know, how have you seen, um, you know, companies respond to this, um, you know, shift in um, uh, where people work? Yeah, good question. So, you know, what we're seeing, basically the majority of our clients are going to be on a hybrid schedule. Um, two days in office, three days in office, um, the rest of the days from home. Um, there's very few companies that are still 100% remote. And, um, and there's definitely has been a push of getting back into the office. I think, you know, people are starting to realize, okay, we need some of that team building. We need some of that in-person FaceTime. It's very important. Um, we do have every so often, I mean, I just filled a senior accounting position fully remote about uh, this last month, but they're becoming more and more rare. Um, when candidates come to us saying, you know, I want this, I only am looking for 100% remote, usually our first question is going to be, well, how long are you willing to wait? 
uh, because it's going to be definitely, it's going to narrow your opportunities a lot. Um, also, you're now competing with not just the Austin market regionally, you know, they're, they're recruiting from across the United States. And so it's much tougher to get these positions. Um, so to answer your question, there's just been, there's definitely been a push to go back to office. Some of our clients, 100% in office, the majority, I'd say, are working on a hybrid schedule. Yeah, I think hybrid seems to be the go-to people are wanting. Um, they understand that, I mean, I know for actually both, um, you know, being in office is pretty important to us because our work culture is, that's what makes us who we are as a firm. Um, and so, you know, we want to still give people that flexibility to be home sometimes, but coming into the office is also pretty beneficial. So um, we have maybe one department that can be like fully, fully remote. Um, and besides them, uh, everybody else, you know, comes into the office on a hybrid schedule. Um, and like for me, I got to create my hybrid schedule. Um, so that was pretty nice. I like that flexibility. Um, but I, me personally, I think I'm a much better employee when I am in the office, uh, when I'm at home. So I kind of just, I know it depends on how people work and like what best environment is for them, but I know companies in general are pushing to get people back. Um, maybe not 100% fully, but you know, some days out of the week, they, they want to see your face. That's good. Well, that's all I had. Thanks, um, you know, um, Julie, for putting this together, and uh, or Lauren. And uh, thanks for uh, jumping on this call, Mia and Bethany. All right. Well, if there are no other questions for our panelists, um, I would like to say thank you again so much. You're welcome to drop off the call. We're going to have a quick wrap up and do some admin stuff for the for the mentor program that you don't have to sit through. Um, so thank you again so much for being here today. Bye. Thank you for having us. Thanks, guys. Bye.